welcome. This screencast is all about fun and interesting ways to investigate physical features in your local area. It's all about section 3 on the project tip list. There are many, many ideas in this podcast. You don't need to do all of them. Just pick the one, two or three that look most interesting to you and work with them. OK, let's start by reminding ourselves what physical features we're looking at. The first question we can ask ourselves is about how we can describe these physical features. Here are two ways that are secondary data. The first thing we could do is to find a map. And on this map, a blank map, we could shade in features in our local area. For example, you could colour the river in blue, shade in an area of woodland green, an open area or park dark green. Make sure you use a key to identify the features and add as many labels as you can. A second thing you could do is to use an aerial photograph. You could get this from Google Maps. In the right hand corner is an icon and underneath it says map. Click on that and change it to satellite. Remember you can't copy and paste from Google Maps, you'll need to print screen paste and remember to add lots and lots of labels to your aerial photograph, maybe naming some of the physical features. You could, if you live in Pangbourne, put for example the River Thames. You could make a field sketch. This is an example of some primary data collection. A field sketch is a very simple thing to do. You look at, at the view of the um, physical features that you're looking at and you try to make a very simple sketch of them. You don't have to draw things exactly. You could draw a sort of cartoon tree to represent a whole forest and just make sure that you annotate on that it's a forest. There is a very useful website here that shows you how to do field sketches. Scroll right down to the bottom to find their advice. The fourth thing you could do is also primary data collection. You could take, simply take some photographs and annotate them with the physical features in your local area. Remember, the most important thing is to add labels. The more detail you put in, the better. There are some different fun and exciting surveys that you could do of the flora and fauna. Flora and fauna are key geographical words that you can use. The first thing you could do when you're looking at rivers and lakes is to go pond dipping. You must make sure you ask your parents before you do this and talk to them about where you're going. There are lots of online identification charts you can use to identify any animals or wildlife that you may find. When you're looking at woodlands, you can do some tree identification. Again, this is a good site for, for online identification charts. Quite an exciting thing to do is to go tree beating. What you do is you gently shake branches of the tree onto a sheet or an umbrella and I try to identify any animals that you may find in that sample that you've collected. When you're looking at open areas you can simply look around you and identify trees, shrubs, animals that you may see in the local area. Make sure that you add labels to photographs to do this. Finally, when you're looking at wildlife, it's fun to go out and see if you can find animal tracks in your local area. When you do, here is a good identification guide to identifying the types of animals that you've seen. Remember, you can present your findings in tables, tables graphs, photographs, field sketches, but the most important thing is that you must comment on them. You can analyse some of these physical features that you're looking at. A simple way to analyse physical features is to think about the good things about them and the bad things about them. For example, if you were looking at the Kennet and Avon Canal, you might be looking at the fact that people can walk along the canal. It's also, the towpath is also a cycle path. It gets people um, out and about in, using nature. Bad things about it are that when people visit the canal, they may drop litter or they may fish in areas that they're not supposed to fish in. When you're thinking about people, you can think about people's points of view about physical features and you could answer, try to answer some of these questions. 
There are a variety of ways that you could collect this data. You could do it simply by observations. You could count the number of people visiting your local park, for example, or you could interview them. You don't have to interview strangers. Parents, friends and parents and friends are fine. Annotate these findings onto a photo. The third way that we can analyse physical features is to think about some of the problems and threats that exist to them. Housing development is often a big threat to our open spaces. You could look in our local newspapers online to get articles about these threats. Challenge seekers may like to think about number four on their project tick list. You could collect this information using an interview. These are some examples of questions that you could ask friends and family about their use of your physical features in your local area. You could show your results to the table, maybe a graph, and remember to comment on them looking for patterns. Finally, to summarise, we need to think about the physical features that we're going to investigate, and we need to remember how we're going to investigate them. Through secondary data, maps and aerial photos, primary data, our own photos, field sketches, tree beating, pond dipping, interviews and so on. Remember that you must comment on your findings and using detailed labels is a really good way to do this. Good luck with your physical features data collection and make sure that you listen to the other podcasts.